and welcome to this week's edition of WCS Sports Connection. I'm your co-host, Jimmy Qualls, and with us is our resident wrestling expert, Tate Matthews. Tate, it is rivalry week, man. This Friday night, all the rival games have been played, uh, except for the Battle of 840, but uh, in, in 11 AAA, huge matchups, huge implications. We're coming down the stretch. It's hard to believe that this thing is almost over. I know, I know, but I'm fired up about Friday night. Can't wait to see the turnout. Last year it was capacity, right? It was a capacity crowd. We've got a larger venue now, or you secured a larger venue, so I'm excited to see the... And that venue is? Mafiosas. Man, I can't Ooh, wait. Ooh, the Al Capone. I can't wait. I'm fired up. It's going to be awesome. You better bring your A game. Upstairs, that whole place out there on the on the balcony, you got the heaters rolling. Don't say it's too cold. It's going to be, oh, it's gonna be a great time, man. Yeah. Going to be fun, and so again, can't wait to see the turnout, hopefully. Hope uh, we've got some really good games to talk about. So if about. you're watching this show and you go out to a game Friday night, come join us right after the games. We're going to start around 9 o'clock, a little afterwards. We're going to be streaming this. Come join us at Mafiosa's at, uh, uh, for the after party of the Rivalry Friday matchups. Before we get into basketball, let's talk a little bit about wrestling. What do we know? Well, uh, state duels start this week. Uh, they'll start Friday. <clears throat> Excuse me. They'll start Friday at the Williams County Ag Center. Our guys have been doing this for, I don't know, eight years now, nine time, years. Yep. Do a great job with it, uh, and, and, and it's just a very well tournament. But it'll start Friday at 3 o'clock with AAA. Uh, that'll be uh, on one mat, and then the D2s will be on the other mat. And then at 5A, I mean at 5 o'clock, the AAA will come on, and as usual, very well represented in the AAA. We've got Nolansville and Fairview. Both of them won uh, their second or back-to-back -back region t championship, so congratulations to both them. Again, we, we talk about it all the time with Nolensville, just the way they have skyrocketed to athletic success. And, in every sport. In every sport. So they defeated Forrest, and which, which you know from your time down there is a very quality wrestling program on the AAA, and then Fairview defeated Millington Central. So congratulations to both of them. Who's the wrestling coach at Forrest? It used to be Kyle Stacy at one time. Yeah, it's not. Um, I don't know, but it, Kyle gave it up. Okay. Just wanted to... Kyle wanted to spend a little more time watching his daughter play softball. And in AAA, Independence and uh, Centennial are going back. Uh, I think a lot of people had Brentwood kind of penciled in to go, and then uh, Independence just had a huge, huge upset of them in the district tournament. And then um, so then they battled back, and Centennial edged out. Um, Centennial has Centennial, down Independence 40 to 39 for the region. Centennial's kind of been that, that, that favorite this year. They have kind of led the pack. Yeah, I, th I think everybody that, kind of had yeah. Brentwood and Centennial in there. Right, right. But Coach Grindstaff and Independence Eagles, man, sliding there at the right yeah. last minute. Hey, I do want to give a shout out to a, a particular Brentwood wrestler, Tank Star, yep. dual athlete. Don't let anybody tell you that not playing more than one sport is not important, especially when you're playing football. If you're not playing basketball, how important wrestling is. Two football players, particularly offensive linemen, defensive linemen, hips, feet, getting everything ready. But Tank Star uh, committed this past weekend to the Citadel it's in big. the Southern Conference. That's a great league out there, and uh, congratulations to him. Without a doubt. And uh, I, I didn't know this until I started looking at Independence. This is their eighth state duels in 12 years. That's unbelievable. I mean, that, that's a heck of accomplishment. So they're both going that way. And, and you talked about uh, uh, you talked about football. Really, kind of the cool story from from last week in this in this district region tournament. Drew Cannon, uh, wrestler for Independence football guy, he's been out the last two years, uh, and and one of the big parts against Brentwood is their upper weights. They usually sweep those. Anyways, Drew comes comes back. Coach Grindstaff and them talked him into coming back out to wrestling to help the team. Uh, I think he's sitting at nine and zero. Oh. He hadn't wrestled in two years, which was since his freshman year uh, against Brentwood. Uh, they bumped him to uh, to not face Skylar Coffee. They bumped him up, which Skylar hadn't been beat by anybody in the state. No, no shame in that. Not sure that he will be. And I don't think so either. Uh, he, he, we need to go this weekend. He's impressive, or next week. But um, they bumped him up. That put him against Tank Star, who's another guy that's not very easy um, to wrestle. And, and, and Drew got a huge, huge upset victory. And I, I say that in the highest form of flattery towards Tank. So. What, they don't win that match. They probably don't win the, the district, I mean, the, the, the overall match. And then Brentwood's going instead of Independence. So congratulations to both of them. And it's going to be really fun. As we know, AAA is, uh, there, there's, a, there's a dynasty in East Tennessee called Cleveland. So I think everybody's shooting to knock them off the, off the mountain. But it's going to be fun. 
Well, you got the duels this weekend, which is the team Correct. part of the whole concept, and then right. you come back the following weekend with the individuals. And I think there's two weeks in between. You're yeah. probably right. Yeah. There's two weeks, and then and then the individual. That's where we're going to get to see all these guys shine on their own, which is a pretty interesting uh, setup how they do that. If you haven't had a chance, go out to the Acme B and see this event, man. They have the mats, wall to wall mats. If you're a wrestling fan, it's like a dream oh, yeah. place with all those mats and things going on. So. Uh, best of luck to all of our teams going in the duels and furthermore later down the road uh, to all of our individual wrestlers from the WCS Sports Conference. On the basketball side, on the boys' side, let's start with the boys this week. We're looking at buying and sell. So keep your mind wide open on who you're going to buy and who you're going to sell this week as we come down uh, come down the stretch. Let's start with Brentwood. Brentwood moves to 18-5, and 10-2, and in 11 AAA. Uh, they uh, face Ravenwood this week. 7 and 10, 4 and 6, throw all the records out the door. The Battle of the Woods is one of the best athletic events, a basketball battle of the woods. The football, I mean, it doesn't matter what sport they're playing. People show up for this. But Brentwood, Brentwood beat Summit 51-42 on Friday night. I was at that game, had an opportunity to see that game. Summit, I'm telling you, if they can get it figured out, three quarters, great basketball they tend to fade in that fourth quarter. They cut maybe two of the eight minutes. So they play three, three quarters and two minutes of really good basketball. And then the, you know Brentwood kind of climbed them way back in this thing. They had lulled them to sleep. And then uh, uh, behind the play of Preston Moore, which brings us to the WCTV Play of the Week, Preston Moore with two acrobatic athletic shots. Massey right into Jolly's hands and unable to finish were the Spartans. Wow, great move. Up and under shot by Preston Moore. Able to cut into the lead of, of Summit by two. And they are looking to pull away. Wow, and one. What a play by Preston Moore. Gets fouled on the shot, floats it up, nothing but net. Great play by the young man. As you can see right there, there may be a play or two that, that, that really breaks Summit's back in every game that they've played really, really close. I think uh, Coach Goodwin and I were talking the other day how many games they've lost in single digits. Matter of fact, if you combine it, then you can get to double digits. This wow. is one of those games where you hit a couple of shots like what Preston Moore right there does, and it just kind of breaks the back because they take that first lead and they've played really, really tough. But hats off to Brentwood because it was an ugly game. It was low. It was the, the scoring was low, and they knew that, and they kind of uh, persevered through that. 51-42, um, Ravenwood beat Spring Hill, 65-43. Uh, no surprises there for the mighty Raiders of Spring Hill as they fall to O in the world. Ravenwood 7-10, 4-6, like I said, in 11 AAA play. 54-38 uh, last time. Coach Whitlock, what is he going to have to do to win this matchup? Well, uh, one thing you know is if you've ever seen one of Coach Whitlock's scouting reports, it won't, there will be no lack of detail. So he's got a good grasp of what they're about. And, and, and usually they always try to they find a way to either pick one of these off. At the, you know what I'm saying? Even when there's a talent game. So, I, I, you know, I, I think you've got to start with you gotta, you got to limit Thurman, don't you? And then when Preston Moore gets in there and starts creating plays in the lane like you just saw, uh, against Summit, I don't think that's good for them too. But I, they, they got to limit, they got to limit uh, Thurman and Mills, and uh, you know you, you, you're uh, first one to forty, and less than what is it? Less, less than, than ten turnovers. Less than twelve turnovers. Less than twelve turnovers. I think if this game gets much over forty nine points. Ravenwood's in big trouble. It's got to be low scoring. Kind of what Summit was doing last night uh, or I, last Friday night. I agree with you. Uh, play that kind of sticks out in my head. I think Harry Lackey has, has struggled a little bit maybe from a mental aspect from the perimeter. Hasn't shot the ball real well. Teams have tend to back off of them. There's a particular play late in that game. It may have been a two-point game, three-point game. I cannot remember the score where he catches the ball at the top of the wing. What's the first thing they do? The, one of the twins, I think it was uh, Destin, may have been guarding Wade, backs off as a scattering report, per the scattering report, and he buries a huge three. I mean, that, that right there for his confidence, for his team yes. is huge. If he shoots the ball well, because I'm telling you right now, Jack Thurman's going to shoot the ball well. Jack Schumann, uh, excuse me, Jack Thurman is shooting the ball from the floor, from the field goal percentage, around 47 to 50% from twos, and in the high 30s, uh, low 40s from threes. It don't get any better than that. Well, you were at the game. Uh, talk about a, a different game and a different the, the way you got to play them. What was the end of the? What was the score at the end of the first quarter? Four to three. <laughs> 
Have you ever seen that? Everybody in the stands had, had, had fallen asleep. The thing was, it was quiet. You'd hear a pin drop. But that's kind of what Summit, but I don't think they want they, three. No, that's yeah, what yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. Neither team could get in a flow, and that's part of the Summit. I, I don't know if it's a strategy. I don't know if that's what Coach Goodman wants, but it's, it's just the way it works, man. It's ugly right now, and that's okay. You want to keep it muddled up. And neither team could really get in the flow. Next thing you know, someone hits a couple of baskets. They're up six. They're up eight. They never could have go, get over the hump. I felt like if they could get to the 10 or 12-point range, they literally could have put this thing away early on, midway through the third quarter. But hats off, man. Brentwood kept yeah. battling. They tried to fight that sleep off. They, they woke up, hit some shots. And who? Jack Thurman hit some Huge threes, man, right there with uh, uh, with people all over him. Preston Moore then, you, you know, you stretch the floor. Preston Moore then drives to the hole, hits a couple of hand grenades like he did right here. And, you know, it's one of those things. It, they get on a run, they get that first lead, and now you've taken all the wind out of the sails of, of Summit. But I'm going to stick by my prediction. Old Sparty, you're not going to want to play. Three freshmen and They're two getting sophomores. closer and closer and closer. Tristan Cogger with the, probably his career game, I think he ended up with 17 or 18 points. Uh, you know, this kid should be in the eighth grade. Uh, really good player. Destin and Keaton may not have the best line, stat line of the night uh, ever, but what they bring to the table is tip here, still there, rebound here. Their, their, their Achilles heel right now is, is, is staying in the game. They cannot get in foul trouble. Stay on the floor, young men. Listen to me. Stay on the floor. There's going to be an opportunity on the backside where you give up an offensive rebound and you cannot foul. Let the bucket go. That two points in the middle or the first part of the second quarter or the third quarter, two minutes in, is not going to cost you the game. But you getting a fourth foul and sitting down will cost you the game. Young men, listen to me very carefully. Stay on the floor. Don't take the fakes. If it happens, it happens, man. If you contest and then make the shot, it happens. So what? Let's live to fight another minute, another quarter, because those guys have got to be on the game. Point guard, Kanata Wirtz, really, really good basketball player. Just play solid. Don't turn it over. First one to 40 for Old Sparty, you got a shot. I think you're right. They're, nobody wants to see them in the tournament. I know that Coach Goodman right now is taking feverish, he's, he's, feverish notes. So is, just, uh, yeah. Uh, Franklin, 17 and 5, 10 soaking and 1. this all in. Was Absorbing. off this past Friday. Battle of Franklin. Must see TV, my friend. The first game lived up to the hype, lived up to the billing where the game came down literally to the last possession. And Dusty Williams hits a floater to beat Franklin at Franklin, 63-61. Centennial has won five in a row. Centennial beat Indy 60-42 to to revenge a loss early near to the Independence uh, Eagles. Franklin was off, like I said, but they've won six in a row. I'm not sure it gets any better than this. Oh, this is going to be a big game. I, the first one was at Franklin, so, right, this is at Centennial, yeah. Uh, it's going to be a great crowd there, and I don't know why, man. We talked about it before that last Centennial Franklin game. Centennial matchups. There's so many matchup problems in 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 11 AAA, and I don't know why, but Centennial gives Franklin problems. Who's the key you're winning in this game? If Centennial wants to win this game, who is the key? Well, I'm assuming you're saying Trey Carlton. No, Dusty Williams. Trey Carlton is when he wants to be as unguardable. Trey Carlton is going to be Trey Carlton. Right. Trey Carlton needs to play like he did the first time. He doesn't need to push the issue, know when to go, know when to hold, do the right things, be mature about it. He has been great this year on that. I think that stays. Dusty Williams is the key for Centennial in this game. He needs a He's double. in the 20s. He, well, I don't know that he needs to be in the 20s. He needs to have a double-double game. He needs to be himself. I haven't seen him play like that in a while. Last couple games, again, he's – I don't know, it just kind of fading away. Can't fade away, young man. Dusty Williams is a great player. Yes. He's the key to winning this game uh, and, and keeping the turnovers low. If you're on the Franklin side, keys to winning. Well, it'd be nice if Glover goes for 30 and he's hitting all of his shots. But, you know, you look at the Page overtime win from last week, and it's, it's a guy you've been talking about since the beginning of the year. But uh, I, I think if Reed Kemp continues to grow oh, and keeps – playing the way he is. And by grow, I mean, you know, he's a sophomore. <laughs> um, but he keeps playing the way he is and controlling the offense and playing with the confidence he is. I think he's a big key of it. And then obviously uh, Big Curl and, and Hainsworth, they do have a physical um, advantage down low. And if those guys can be physical, I, I know Big Curl's outside a little bit more, but if, uh, if Ashari can be physical and, and control that paint, Reed Kemp, because Glover's going to get his, right? I mean, how many times have we seen? Maybe if he's not on, he's going to end up filling it up. We've seen everything the from the diamond in one to the face guard to the diamond in, or triangle in two to the 
whatever and three on him to the, you know, everybody right. on him everything. and leave everybody else open, whatever, Franklin still finds a way to win. Yeah. That's because Ashari Hainsworth has shot 100% from the field in one game, shot 80% the next. Matt Thurman, who you reference, is big curls, having big games. Reed Kemp, got to have less than five turnovers. He's been drawing a tough task with Trey Carlton quick hands, yeah. getting a couple of reps last game. Keep those turnovers to a minimum. Finley Long, new, new uh, player in there for Franklin, has not played all year except for the last couple of games in the back side of that 1-3-1. One, one. Keep an eye on that. Key to winning for Franklin, Jordan Bruce. You like and that. Jordan Bruce gets to double digits. Mr. 10 for 10. Franklin wins. That'd be big. They'll all be threes. They'll all be threes from the same exact <laughs> board. So get ready. All right, Summit in the uh, border battle. Summit 9 and 10, 47 versus, versus Independent 6 and 14, 3 and 8. This is a huge game for those guys because of seeding purposes. Right now, Summit sitting in 7, Indy sitting in 8. They want to flip that script because the, obviously the loser of this game, it looks like, would have uh, Spring Hill in the opening round, and the winner of that Spring Hill matchup then gets after the Spring Hill game would then match up with the number one, which at this current time would be Franklin. Um, Indy lost to Centennial 60-44. They've lost four in a row. Summit lost to Brentwood 49-46. Summit won this 49-46 in the first meeting. I feel like this is two teams trending in a different direction. What are your thoughts on this game? I agree, and but, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, you're the basketball coach, but you know whoever, whoever finishes eighth is going to win that playing game. Right, we know that. Well, according to my West Nashville League uh, overall record, I would not a basketball. I, I, guy. I would not be called a basketball <laughs> coach, but I, I am a basketball fan. And watching this, Summit keeps inching the right way. They need to stay hungry. If they do, they'll get their independence. Still trying to find their identity. They're back and forth, Jekyll and Hyde. They have lost four in a row. This right here could really hurt them mentally if they lose this game to Summit, because I think they're thinking in their mind they're going to win this game at home. Flip the script on the standings, get out of that uh, that one eight nine game, uh, but but you know. Uh, some... t t tell me this though, does this play into it? Who's a worse matchup for Independence? Because I believe in this in in in, in this boys' side. Who's a worse matchup for Independence, Franklin or Brentwood, or both? You for, see what I'm for, saying? For Independence. Yeah, I think the worst matchup is Brentwood. Okay, so uh, it, it might be. It might benefit Favorable? Independence to fall. Yeah, to, to right. I'm sure that's what they're talking about today. Look, <laughs> no. guys, we're gonna we're gonna throw. No, this but game. you're talking I, about I how big. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I see your you point. So you're right. It could be a, a a blessing in disguise for either one of them. So really. if you're playing that that game of semantics, if you start thinking about that, look at it from that perspective. So Summit obviously shows not only one can they play with Brentwood, they can beat Brentwood. Right. Now, but does it does it favorable to turn around and have to play them so quick of a turnaround? And Brent was thinking, now you know what happened this last game. So you playing all these hypotheticals. Yeah. You got to go out. You got to play the game. I think Summit is a nightmare for anybody that plays them. Anyway, they're like a sleeping dragon. Everybody knows it. There's there's mismatches on their side of the ball all night long. Right. If they can string four quarters together, if they're all hitting it the same night, you're in real trouble. You are in trouble. Speaking of the WNSO, uh, from my old days there, they have a they have a heart of the game trophy that they give out at the end of the year. I hear you're in the lead for it. <laughs> That's about like the refs have that, all voted that, for you. That's like winning the TWSAA. Uh, uh, the refs have all voted for you as the, as the early leader. <laughs> what is the uh, uh, the TWSAA award that you get? You know, for being good sportsman. I will not be up for that award at the WSNL, <laughs> and it, it's just it's just not this stuff ever. Page nine and 13, 5 and seven versus Spring Hill four and sixteen zero oh and eleven. All right, look. I mean, it's 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 the same same song, different day. It's I mean, for the out. first. First uh, Undertaker do uh, beat of the day right here that goes to the uh, Spring Hill Raiders. I mean, it's just, you know, this this is exactly what the doctor ordered for Coach Noah and the page. Patriots getting back. They've lost two in a row. Uh, they did win 51-39. They're 5-7. and seven. This would put them at 6-7. and seven. If you start looking and playing at the matchup game, uh, uh, take, look down the road, they're sitting in fifth place. They want to hold on to that fifth place. That would put them in a Dixon County page first round matchup. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly, and, and man, what a, they took, they gave Franklin everything they wanted last week, had to go to overtime um, for Franklin to get to win, and, and, and the interesting thing, uh, told Coach No, Coach Joins knew it was coming. He was worried about that game, um, and, and rightfully so, because Page is a team that can, they're right there in the middle of the pack, but they can pick they really off are. anybody above them. They're, they're mentally, uh, you know, how they're going to bounce back, you know, they lost that last second 
shot at Franklin. Now they've lost two in a row. You're going to have to bounce back. You want to make a prediction here? They're going to finish in that uh, fifth hole, or will somebody else finish in that fifth slot? No, I think they finish in fifth. All right. Nolensville, 13-9, 5-1. We'll play that here in just a minute. Giles County, 4-13, 1-5. Giles beat Forrest, 57-51. They lost five in a row prior to that. Nolo won first time, 66-49. Beat Central Magnet as well, 55-41 last Friday night tape. They're sitting in first. Giles in last. Go figure on that, right? So Could be another tombstone. It could be another tombstone night. I think Nolensville is looking really, really good. Their boys team, they're in a collision course. Quite possibly this thing plays out. Fairview, Nolensville, regional championship. That'd be awesome. That, my friend, would be awesome. Yes. But there's two other teams that have something to say about that. One, Hickman County on one side. No Bulldogs. And Marshall County on the other side. Yeah. But, you know, you get beat 40 the last time. That, that, I don't think they repeat yeah. that, but it's, it's going to no. be tough. So I think Hickman County is more of the problem than They Marshall. are. There is a, there's a matchup difficulty there for, for whatever reason. I mean, you've got the Trent Turner story. Um, you know, they won the other night, 46-44. I went to that game. It was an absolute, no pun intended, a dog fight. I mean, those two teams going at it, they have – let me just put it this way. doesn't look like there's going to be too many uh, uh, sportsmanship trophies handed out at that uh, matchup because they have renewed the old rivalry of the Fairview-Hickman County days. Nice. That's uh, good. Yeah, it, it is. It's fun. Uh, it's, it's great to, to be an innocent bystander in that thing and watch. I'm no innocent bystander, but you would be, my friend. But I, I, I'm getting it from both sides. But it's pretty interesting. Fairview, speaking of, 21-2, 10-1 in District 11 AA. They play Creekwood. Creekwood has lost five in a row. Fa uh, Fairview beat Waverly 72-47 and Hickman County. We mentioned that Hickman County sitting in second place right now. Hickman County's only, only, got, only has – if I'm not mistaken, two losses in the district. You cannot slip up right here. Lewis County is the only loss. Matter of fact, Lewis County was the last loss to a Tennessee team for Fairview back on December the 4th. If you remember, they lost one at the Kenwood Tournament to a Kentucky team over the Christmas break, but they've won seven in a row to move to 21-2. and two. 11 AAA boys standings. I want to give a shout-out to boy, my boy DJ Estes. Picked up an offer from Bryan College this, 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 uh, this past weekend. Uh, 11 AAA standings. Franklin ten and one, Brentwood ten and two, Centennial eight and three, Dixon seven and five, Page five and seven, uh, and six, Ravenwood five and six, Summit four and seven, Indy three and seven, Spring Hill O oh, for the world. Let's play Wilco stock market right now. Franklin boys, do Franklin boys by ourselves pick up another loss in eleven AAA? Oh, man, I'm gonna go ahead and answer that. I'm gonna say yes. I think it would probably is needed. Um, Yes, but I don't think it's Friday night. I say yes, and it does. If they win Friday night, here's, here's the issue. If they win Friday night, that puts them at a lock, right? So then you've got to stay focused for those last two or three games. It's right. going to be people now fighting for seating below them. May come out, maybe not as sharp. Yeah. Yep. So uh, that's the matchups right now. Uh, Brentwood looking at playing Summit first round. If it was played today, Centennial would play Ravenwood, Dixon, Page, Buy your tickets. It's going to be awesome. 11 AAA. On the, on the girls' side, Brentwood 14 7, 7 and 4 versus Ravenwood in the Battle of the Woods. They're 11 and 7, 7 and 4. Identical records looking for seating right here in that 4 5 matchup. You would have a Battle of the Woods 4 5. The only thing they're arguing for right now is who's going to wear white and play that home game uh, in that first round, which is going to be really important. Brentwood did lose to Summit 54 52 in an overtime thriller. Uh, Tabor, Taylor Limperville with a go-ahead bucket is your WCTV Play of the Week. Limperville wide open, decides to drive. Does, and hits! Wow! What a decision by Taylor Limperville. Wide open three-pointer, decides to drive it. Takes a higher percentage shot and is able to connect. Man, what a game. 53-52. This game was back and forth, back and forth. Hats off to the Lady Spartans. Are you kidding me, man? They're playing great. Colson, Limperville. I love Marley Anderson. Love watching her play. She's uh, playing really well out there. Uh, Ravenwood beat Spring Hill 50 to 9. Close matchup in 11 Triple Eight. Look. I, that was the final score? That was the final. Wow. Second tombstone of the day goes to the uh, Raiders, Lady Raiders. It just, it's tough. I know they won't out. I'd like to see them help them uh, get out because it's just it's not favorable. 
being on the, uh, I think that was close to what my West Nashville score was this past <laughs> I've week. Been in a few it's not fun. If you need some help, call me. I'll, I'll, I'll get you through it. Brentwood won the first matchup, 42-37. Franklin was off. They played Centennial. Uh, Centennial lost 63-32. Franklin won this one 51-19 first time. I think that's a repeat. Do you agree with that? Yes, Summit, wholeheartedly. Summit, 12-6, 8-3 in the border battle versus Indy, 5-16, 3-8. Indy beat Centennial. Summit won 53-42. I think Summit's playing really good basketball. They've won six of the last eight. Four in a row. Make it five right here tonight. Hey, uh, last week we talked. I'm buying. I think they're hot, and you just said it. They've won six out of the – Last eight, they just beat Brentwood in overtime. They're playing well. Page 22 and 3, 10 and 1, Spring Hill 3 and 16. Uh, oh, I'm gonna get, I don't know that we've given a team two Coach. tombstones Coach. in a row. Look, I mean, Coach Brock is going to do all he can to not embarrass a team, and that's not going to be enough. Uh, Nolensville 16 and 5, 5 and 1, playing Giles County. As we know, Nolensville has lost a start of their, their leading score for the year due to injury. Uh, Zoe Pillar, tough go That's for the tough. Lady Knights, man. I mean, they had everything lined up. So, buckle up. Somebody will pick up the slack on that. Get yourself in a position to go. They did lose to Community 61-51. They beat Central Magnet 53-29. They beat Giles County last time 70-42. They're sitting in first currently. They still got Community and Marshall County to go uh, in the district play. That's a tough road for the Lady Knights. Hopefully, best of luck to them. I think they get this win at Giles County. Fairview 6-15, big win. Beat Waverly 46-32. We said how important it is to stay around that 500 mark. They're 4-6 in yep. district play. they got to get themselves back in there. Kelsey Goss is playing really good. Double-double 15-13 for them the other night. They did lose 53-25 to Creekwood the first time. They've got to get themselves a chance to get in the middle of the pack. Lady Jackets could pull off an upset. That would be so big for that program out there to get a win in the district tournament. 11 AAA girls standings. Page, Dixon, Summit, Brentwood, Ravenwood, Franklin, Indy, Centennial, Spring Hill. If you look at the preseason coaches poll, we've got a minute to go. Tate, it's nowhere even close what they thought. Uh, with that huge win the other night, Summit has jumped Brentwood into third. They still have Dixon to play. They still got a few games to go. Summit could wrap up second place. In I know. Before it's That'd over be huge, with. wouldn't it? Huge. Uh, well, I think they're, they're, that right there, the, the, the only thing that we know is Paige is clearly Paige is not one. losing two more games. They're clearly number one. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's done. Paige is going to lock up the District 11 AAA championship. Congratulations. They've got the best player right now, Faith Wilkins. It, Faith Wilkins is killing it, playing such good basketball. Great player. The Trevacus Hine Lady Patriots are fun to watch. They've got it wrapped up. Man, this thing is it, it's, its coming to a head. Could hey, they score 100 Friday night? He's not going to do that. He could, absolutely. I think my West Nashville team could probably, maybe that may be a good game. But I'm just saying right now, they they could if they wanted to. Coach Brock's not going to do that. It's going to be a, it's going to be over at the end of the first quarter. It'll be a running clock before half. Popcorn City, Mr. Producer, make sure you put that in there. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.